Hey, Chris. Hello again, everyone. I'm Chris Scher, and this is the Citizen Sports Weekly for Wednesday, Cinco de Mayo, 2021. Robert Harding is with me. Justin Ritzel is on assignment. Really, he is. He's covering a, he's covering a high school sporting event someplace, so he actually is out on assignment. I've always wanted to say that. So. It would be great if he just FaceTimed with us uh, or joined the Zoom, and he's like, well, friends, you know, we have quite a bank barn burner here out on whatever game he's covering. <laughs> I, I think he may be doing baseball. I'm not 100% sure. Of course, the way the weather's been around here lately, who knows what what's getting played. So, all right. So, uh, Robert and I, we're going to talk about the NFL draft, uh, of which uh, finally ended on Saturday. Although I shouldn't say finally ended because we love the draft. We love watching the draft. It's a lot of fun and uh, something that we enjoy. So I shouldn't say finally, but it's over with. Maybe for some people, they were pretty happy that it ended. So uh, we'll talk about the overall draft and our team specifically a little bit. So, Robert, your, your thoughts on, on, the, uh, on the draft there? Well, I, I thought that, uh, you know, overall it was, uh, you know, pretty interesting to see some of the, uh, some of the picks, including those that fell to the, uh, to the second round. Um, the Browns drafted a linebacker whose name escapes me. I know the acronym is, uh, or his initials rather, are JOK. And, um, you know, he, he was projected as like a top 20 pick. And he fell to, I think, number 52 for the Browns. Uh, I guess that was due to a, uh, an unreported uh, heart condition, or at least it was, it wasn't reported before the draft. So, you know, that was kind of interesting to see. And then, you know, what uh, some of the, you know, some of the teams did, you know, in the later rounds, uh, you know, addressing areas of need. And I know, you know, with uh, our teams, you know, there were different areas of need that were mentioned that probably weren't addressed or at least not addressed uh, as soon as we thought that they would be. Um, but, you know, I thought overall, uh, for, you know, obviously it's tough to, tough to grade these players now, but I, I do think that you can grade the teams on how they address their needs. Uh, and, and, you know, that's why, you know, I, I find some of the draft grades interesting because, okay, yeah, yeah, they may have gotten great players, but did they address the areas of need? And I think that that's where the grades really should focus on. Uh, you know, I thought the big winner of the draft, quite frankly, was the Bears uh, because they they drafted Justin Fields in the first round. I don't care what they did after that. That's a massive pick for them because, uh, you know, that's quarterback of the future right there. Maybe maybe Andy Dalton gets you through the the first year here, or maybe they, they pull a, a Miami and let uh, Fields come in at some point in the season. Uh, who knows? But, you know, you got a capable veteran quarterback there in, in Dalton. Uh, he's on, a, I think he's on a one-year deal. Then 2022, it's Justin Fields year. Uh, and, you know, I think that he, he will be successful in the league. So, you know, overall, you know, again, it's tough to grade how, how these teams did, but um, I think as we get into the discussion about our individual teams, um, it'll be, uh, you know, we could talk more about how they address the areas of need. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you this. What I would like to see is we've talked a little bit about this before, but in regards to uh, let's see draft grades from 2018. Let's let's look back at the 2018 draft, 2017 draft. In three or four years, these players have you know had enough chance to to gain experience to be uh, sufficient contributors. So it'd be kind of cool to see a writer, and I know a couple of them have, but you don't really see much of it out there. But like. You know, here's here are the grades for this team's 2018, 2017 drafts, and uh, and see how they are. And uh, yeah, you're right. You're basically giving grades for addressing needs, whether you pick a stud or a dud. You know, go figure. Uh, it, you just you just don't know. It's impossible. So, um, so I'm going to talk about the Dolphins just a little bit. And and we did talk about the first round picks on Friday. Jalen Wall, wide receiver out of Alabama, and Jalen Phillips, defenseman out of Miami. And of course, my concerns with Phillips' concussions and, uh, you know, with Waddle. I mean, the fact that they, that they had stayed at number three, they could have had Pitts, they could have had Chase, whatever. But looking at the other rounds for the Dolphins, in the second round, they picked Javon, Javon Holland to safety out of Oregon. Um, you know, look, I thought pass defense was one of Miami's strengths. I know the safeties, Bobby McCain, there's been a little concern with, but. I think you could address that later on in the draft. I kind of like the kid from uh, Syracuse, Cisco. I thought he would have been a great pickup for them um, later on, but they didn't go there. 
Um, they picked uh, a couple offensive tackles, one in the, in the second round. Also, they traded up with the Giants to get Liam Eichenberg from, from Notre Dame, uh, supposed to be a solid starter. That's good. Um, and then um, Larnell Coleman, who's from UMass. And I guess the reason with this guy is he's got like the, like the longest reach of any offensive lineman in the draft, his arms, like his wingspan, whatever. So don't know what that's going to translate into. And then they picked Hunter Long, the tight end of Boston College, with the third round, the 81st pick. Look, I think the Dolphins, if they really wanted to tight end that bad, they could have stayed at three and gotten Pitts. They, I don't think they needed to pick another tight end that late. Uh, Long is very smart. He builds his own computers. He can do a Rubik's Cube under, under a minute. Wow, that's great and everything. But, you know, I, I would have maybe gone with a running back in the third round. Uh, instead of waiting to the seventh round and picking uh, Jared Dokes from Cincinnati, who, you know, again, is, I don't know what this guy's going to be a special teams player. Uh, I mean, it's just disappointing. That's really the biggest disappointment. Just like last year's draft, the biggest disappointment was not picking a running back high up. And there was talk that the Dolphins were going to pick one um, in the second round with their first choice. Um, if Williams, the North Carolina running back was left, but uh, Denver uh, traded up and snatched them. Uh, away from Miami so I mean you know the, the team's never going to admit they were going to like pick a player to spot and got beat out so that's a little disappointing but overall I mean I'd give the Dolphins draft a B just for the fact the needs they 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 fulfilled but they didn't get a running back they didn't draft the center which they also kind of need um but we'll see how it goes Robert yeah with the Bills uh you know they they came in I think really needing uh, three three different positions uh, that that were you know really high on the list. Corner, of course, uh, running back was up there, and uh, edge rusher. Now they they addressed the the last of those in a big way because the first two picks of the draft were uh, edge rushers. Uh, you know we talked about Greg Rousseau uh, uh, last week on the video. In the second round, they tar. Sorry about that. That's ESPN there. Um, Carlos uh, Basham, I believe the uh, uh, pronunciation is. He's the defensive end out of Wake Forest. Uh, so, you know, he, he's a guy that they seem to think could be more of a contributor right away. Rousseau might be, you know, um, more of a project there, you know, really only has like one year of experience, college experience under his belt, but certainly a lot of talent. He could develop into a big player. Uh, in the third round, they took Spencer Brown, an offensive tackle. Now, Bills have uh, the tackle position lined up. So, you know, really what you're taking here is a depth pick at, in round three. And I, and I know a lot of people looked at that and said, well, you know, you need a corner. You know, why didn't you go after a corner here? Uh, and I know that uh, I think, I think one of the uh, Syracuse DBs, uh, maybe both of them were still on the board at that point. Uh, so, the, you know, there were people talking, well, maybe they'll take either of those guys. Uh, but that never happened. They took uh, uh, Spencer Brown at that position. And then they didn't draft again until the fifth round. And they took uh, another offensive lineman, uh, Tommy Doyle, uh, who's another big body. You know, the, the theme of this draft really was that they took a lot of big players, you know, Russo's a, a big guy, I think six, seven, Spencer Brown is six, eight, this Doyle out of uh, Miami of Ohio is six, eight. So a lot of big bodies uh, to, to add to the roster, which, you know, they, they felt that they needed from a depth perspective. And then on the edge rusher side uh, to go up against uh, uh, you know, some of the more competitive teams in the league. Uh, round six, though, you know, I, I know that a lot of people love this pick. Uh, Marquez Stevenson out of Houston. Uh, this guy has speed and, you know, I could see him making the team. You know, the Bills, you know, really like uh, that speed component in different players. Uh, Isaiah McKenzie being an example. You know, Stevenson, if he makes the roster, could certainly contribute, uh, you know, on offense in a lot of different ways uh, with, with that kind of speed. And then also, you know, potentially in the return game as well. The Bills do not have uh, Andre Roberts on the roster uh, anymore. Uh, he's one of the best return men in the league. Uh, I think he was signed by Houston. So uh, that's an area of need that they, that they needed to fill as well. And uh, Stevenson might be the guy for one of those jobs. 
Uh, and then uh, not so, I think, what, nine picks after Stevenson, uh, they took DeMar Hamlin, a safety. You know, again, another depth pick here uh, could play on special teams. Uh, so, you know, some good value there. Uh, and then they took Rashad Wild Goose, one of the be better names. And this is where they finally address the cornerback position. Um, you know, we'll see how he can contribute. He's supposedly a slot corner, so not necessarily the number two corner that they needed. But uh, we'll see, you know, what happens there. I know uh, uh, Taron Johnson is the uh, current uh, slot corner for the Bills. And, uh, but he, I believe is going to be a free agent after the 2021 season. So uh, we'll see what happens there. And then uh, the bills close with taking another offensive lineman, uh, Jack Anderson out of Texas tech. So, you know, all in all, I thought, you know, the bills, you know, certainly added size. They added a couple edge rushers, which if you read between the lines there, they, they know that their pass rush has to be better. I thought that was a real weakness for them last year. And you don't have to look any further than really the Chiefs game uh, to see uh, to see what happened there. Because if you remember, um, I think it was the Browns. They, they got a lot of pressure on Mahomes in that game, and it really made a difference. The Browns really should have won that game in the divisional round. Uh, and then, you know, you look at what the – what the Bills did, and you know, they really didn't get to Mahomes uh, in that AFC title game. So I think that that really, you know, set, you know, that really stayed with them that we have to address this position uh, in a big way, and they did with both their their early picks. Now, you know, we'll see what kind of edge rushers these guys develop into, but you know, it's a start. It's something. I, I do think though that they they missed on the corner position uh, in this draft. I thought they should have addressed that earlier. You have a, you know, you already have some depth, depth at offensive line. Um, you know, I thought it was a miss not to take, you know, one of these corners in the third round when you had a chance uh, to do that. And, uh, you know, so that's my, my only knock on the Bills. But otherwise, I, I think it was a solid draft. They added size, uh, some speed for sure. And, um, you know, we'll see, we'll see how these guys develop uh, in the next couple of years. Yeah. Well, let's let's talk about the AFC East. Now that the draft's over, basically the offseason acquisitions are basically done. I know there's still some free agents that are out there that could be signed, but I think I think that the rosters are basically uh, training camp rosters are basically set. So, you know, let's talk about the AFC East in regards to how we think it's going to go this season. Obviously, very early, but I mean, look, there's no doubt about it. The Bills are the best team in the division. I mean, they they have the best quarterback. They went to the AFC championship game. They're still ascending. I mean, to me, Robert, you're probably thinking it's Super Bowl or bust this year. This team has to get to the Super Bowl for it to be a successful season. Okay. So look, there's no doubt the bills are number one. Okay. Number two is interesting because, you know, last year the Dolphins finished in second with 10 wins. And, you know, you like to think that on paper, that this team is better than, than last year's. They've added more talent. Tua is going to have another year of experience under his belt. But, you know, I'm not trying to be a pessimist here, okay? I try to be an optimist by, na by nature. But there's a part of me that really thinks the Dolphins are actually going to lose more games uh, than last season. That last year, the reason why they won 10 games, a lot of it was Fitzpatrick, the veteran quarterback who's no longer there. He's with the Washington football team. And second, the defense – led the NFL, I believe, in turnovers with 29. And there were some there were some scoop and scores for touchdowns. There were some, you know, a couple pick sixes. This team really, uh, the offense really benefited from, from short fields created by the defense. And there's no guarantee that they're going to get all those turnovers this year. And uh, if that happens, then that offense, who has got to pick it up? And uh, I think the guy is the future. I, I like to uh, – um, but he's got to step up. He's got to show why he was the fifth overall pick in that draft last year. And I'm just thinking that it's going to take another year before he is the player that we think he's going to be. So I think Miami might actually take a step back in the number of wins. And I think the team that could finish in second is the New England Patriots. I mean, uh, look, they did pick a quarterback, Mac Jones out of Alabama, but they still have Cam Newton coming back. And as we both know, Cam Newton was hurt last year. I mean, he had COVID. Um, I think – you know, that being healthy will help out. And as you know better than I do, they've restocked that team, especially on defense, 
um, through free agency. Cal Van Noy coming back at their one year in Miami. Um, I mean, that team is is much better than it was last year. So I could see that I could see the Patriots beating the Dolphins. I mean, you know, finishing in second over Miami. And then the Jets, I mean, look, this is the first year of the rebuild for them, the big rebuild, Zach Wilson, the quarterback. I mean, you know, never say never, but it's unlikely they're going to be contenders this year. Um, they're, they're just basically breaking in a new coaching staff, a rookie quarterback. And for them, I think winning four or five games would be a, a good season for them. So, Robert, your thoughts about the AFC East? Yeah, I mean, I obviously I'm not going to disagree with uh, <laughs> your ranking like of, the, of the Bills. Okay. I mean, you know, the I, I think I agree with you that, uh, you know, I think people after last season, uh, you know, they look at this season like, OK, well, you know, let's let's build off of that. You know, you, you were the AFC runner up last year. Don't put up a banner or anything. You know, now you're playing for, you know, to win the title and go to the Super Bowl and, you know, win, win the Lombardi trophy. I mean, that's, that's, that's the goal. You know, you, you know, you can do it. You, you know, you have the talent there. You know, they have a lot of guys coming back from that roster. That offense is going to be, you know, pretty well intact, you know, on the defensive side of the ball, again, pretty well intact. So, you know, this is a team that's going for it. And, uh, you know, I, I think that they, you know, in the 17 games uh, with the 17 game schedule, could easily see them winning 13, 14 games uh, next season. So, you know, oh. I, I think, uh, you know, I think that they, they're they built to succeed. And, you know, these, you know, we talked about those draft picks. You know, I, I don't I don't expect a lot out of, out of them right away, but I think that they will contribute. Um, you know, on the defensive side of the ball, they have a second-year guy, uh, A.J. Epinesa, who, uh, you know, who was their number one pick last year. He was actually a second-rounder. But, you know, I – you're looking for him to grow as a pass rusher. So you're, you're hoping to get more out of the rush and then, uh, you know, making more plays on defense, because really that was the bill's weakness last year. Uh, I think if they had the defense that they had in 2019, uh, they beat the chiefs in the AFC championship game. Uh, unfortunately uh, we saw what happened um, as for the rest of the division. You know, I, I'm not so down on your Dolphins, Chris, believe it or not. Look, you know, two is a dog and, you know, maybe he'll improve a little bit here. Um, you know, I, I think having Jalen Waddle, I'll put it this way. I know that, you know, a lot of, you know, your friends on Twitter, you know, they're still whining about the draft and, you know, getting Jalen Waddle and not, you know, your, your pal Kyle Pitts or some of these guys. But I actually think Jalen Waddle is the best pick for Tua because they have a prior relationship and, uh, you know, they, they know each other. They're, they're comfortable working with each other. And I think that that'll make uh, Tua a little more comfortable to pull the trigger and actually throw the damn ball uh, instead of doing whatever the hell he did last year. Um, and, you know, I know that they didn't really address the running back position. I know that you're, you know, you're anti Miles Gaskin. I'm a fantasy owner. You know, Miles Gaskin, I think, is great. You know, it's really the offensive line that has to shape up there. And, you know, to your point about the defense, I, you know, I, I tend to agree that they, you know, look, you're, you're not going to get those plays all the time. And, you know, they, they had quite a, quite a stretch there where it seemed like they were scoring uh, defensive touchdowns, you know, every game, you know, they, they beat the Rams practically just by defense alone. So, uh, you know, I, I think, you know, obviously you can't expect that to happen all the time. So, yeah, I, I, I think that they'll take a step back, but, you know, the, the thing with the Patriots, though, and I know that everybody looks at them and says, uh, you know, wow, they really refill this roster. I mean, you look at, you know, they have two of the top tight end free agents in the NFL went to New England in John U. Smith and, and Hunter Henry. Uh, and then the additions that you mentioned on the defensive side of the ball, Kyle Van Noy is obviously a big one. Uh, Ten sacks with the Dolphins, but apparently not good enough to stay on that roster, so they kicked them out. Um, but you know, they still haven't solved the quarterback position. And I, and I know, you know, Cam has, you know, when he, if he can play like he did five, six years ago, uh, this team is a contender, no joke. Uh, they, they have the stockpile, you know, they have the talent stockpile to do it. But if he plays like he did last year, they're not going anywhere. They're a 500 team, uh, eight, well, 
you know, what we consider 500 now, yeah, eight, eight and nine, maybe uh, nine and eight. Um, yeah. But, you know, I, I think that that's really the quarterback position is going to determine whether the Patriots return to being playoff contenders or if they just repeat what happened last year. Uh, and so that, you know, that kind of makes you wonder, you know, if Mac Jones develops in training camp and, you know, is looking good, you know, how quickly do they turn to him uh, in the regular season? Uh, you know, it could be sooner than, than later if the Patriots struggle. Uh, they, they might need to give another quarterback a shot. So, you know, that to me is really, and I, and I agree with you, you know, really the story of the AFC is, you know, who finishes in that second spot or that third spot. And I, I do agree it's a race between the Dolphins and the Patriots. Um, you know, if the Patriots can figure out the quarterback position earlier than the Dolphins, I, I think that'll be the difference. But if Tua shows up and, you know, you know, resumes that rapport with Waddle and, you know, starts being more confident in the pocket and starts slinging it. Dolphins are an easy pick to finish second in the AFC and pick up a wild card spot. So, uh, you know, I, th I think that they could make the playoffs this year if, if Tua uh, develops uh, or at least moves further in his development. And yeah, the Jets, uh, obviously that, you know, they, they had to get rid of your pal Gase. Uh, they brought in a new quarterback. Uh, you know, I think, I think Robert Sala is going to be a great coach for them because, you know, obviously his history, you know, he's been, been one of the better defensive coaches in the league. Uh, and I think just the way he operates is going to, it's going to be good for the Jets, a huge upgrade over that bum Gase. Uh, so, you know, I think that they'll, you know, obviously it's a, you know, kind of a development year. Maybe they win four or five games. They have a decent amount of talent though. I think they could surprise some people, maybe win six or seven, but yeah, they're, they're not going to be contending for a playoff spot this year. All right. Uh, you ready to wrap it up? Because I know you got some writing you got to do. Well, I just want to add one thing, and this is NHL related. Uh, you know, Tom, Tom Wilson uh, of the Capitals, you know, the, there's been much made of this video. And I, I, I wish Ritz was here to talk about it. I'm sure he would have some hot takes. I don't know if you've seen this, Chris, but I you did know, see some of it. Yeah, you know, my, my feeling about Tom Wilson is, you know, there have been a few players like this over the years that, you know, the NHL seems to not uh, crack down on, that they let this go on too long, other players get hurt, including some of the, you know, some of the biggest stars in the game, and, you know, you let these players kind of run wild, and, you know, I know that there's some traditionalists out there that say, well, you know, it's, uh, you know, the players have to police themselves, blah, blah, blah. I'm sorry, that, that's an outdated way of thinking. You know, Tom Wilson doesn't belong in the NHL, period. Um, you know, without this, you know, crap that he pulls, he would be, you know, I think a pretty solid player in this league. He's got, you know, tremendous amount of talent, but, you know, the way that he operates, you know, he's had multiple suspensions before. Now he gets this slap on the hand for, you know, more dirty play. Uh, it's absurd. You know, the NHL needs to crack down on this guy, but I, I don't think they have the cojones to do it there, Chris. Uh, I don't think uh, Batman and his band of idiots uh, are going to do anything about it. It's a shame. Uh, Tom Wilson, uh, you know, they, they've left this going on for too long. And, you know, they just continue giving out slaps on the hand and hope that the players change their ways. And, and look, you know, a guy like Tom Wilson isn't going to change. You know, you got to fix this, and it, and it starts with some harsher punishments. All right. I agree with you. Yeah. All right, folks, we're going to wrap it up. We appreciate you joining us. We're a little bit late today, but uh, we're here, and, uh, you know, we did our video. And uh, next week, maybe we'll do a little baseball talk, and uh, maybe we'll uh, discuss that I know the NBA and the NHL are getting close to playoffs. I mean, it is May. Um, we can discuss some of those things, too. So, all right, folks, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week.